And it doesn't help that Joe Hendry is basically what would happen if a Labrador wished to be a real boy and it was granted. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of all ages, welcome to the next episode of Movies That Don't Suck and Some Do. My name is Neil. And I'm Chris. And today with us, guys, we have a special guest. He is the host of Damn You Hollywood and the 411 Ground and Pound MMA podcast. You can find his coverage of professional wrestling and MMA all over 411 Mania. He is the all-American badass himself, <laughs> Robert Winfrey. Um, I didn't send you that last part, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I went to your Facebook page. You had an American flag. You come up with a Superman shirt on. I mean, you uh, you need to look closer at my Facebook profile picture. Then. <laughs> that's, that's an American flag. <laughs> In front of it is not a political. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was going more Undertaker. Undertaker, because you know it's the uh, best time of Undertaker's career when he was the American badass. Well, that, I mean, that's exactly. a hot take. Yeah, that's no, it's not. <laughs> I know, I know. That, that's I know. a hot <laughs> take. It's, a, it's only because I was at WrestleMania 18 and saw him versus Ric Flair. But anyway, let's get into the movies. Yeah, let's and stop the wrestling talk because Chris will just fall. Asleep. Oh, I'll just saw this. I mean, it's it's like but, it's like when Chris tells me about different paint patterns. So he wants to paint his kitchen. He's like, I'm gonna. What are you talking? I don't. I've never once painted anything. my kitchen. <laughs> I don't want to do that. You're right. Your wife did. Yeah, anyway, exactly. um, <laughs> coming on today. First, the movie that we caught streaming in the world is a movie that we missed during while I was at the theater because I think we were busy with a bunch of other films at the time. Yep. I couldn't remember all of them, or uh, I think I broke my leg or strained Something it at like one that. point this year. Yeah. yeah, it's. I've been all kind of. I don't know. Past the age of forty, for some reason, I keep on breaking everything that I own. Uh, and I don't mean like personally. I mean like on my body. It's weird. But the movie is If, featuring the one, the only, the man that everybody's waiting for this July to go see his movie, Mr. Ryan Reynolds. Oh, hello. I know, right? Whose balls did I have to fondle to get my very own movie? I can't tell you, but it does rhyme with Pulverine. And let me tell you, he's got a nice pair of smooth criminals going under. Anyway, I got places to be. A face to fix, and oh, bad guys to kill. Maximum effort. Yeah, obviously from Deadpool. Dude, of course. How? What else are you going to advertise right now for Ryan Reynolds? I mean, it's not like okay. it's on popcorn boxes, gin bottles, uh, meals that you can get at Bojangle. Oh, Mint no, Mobile. Mint Mobile. Huh? <laughs> Mint Mobile. Like, yeah. It, yeah, it's, it's so not big. like one of the major gaming companies just came out with a unique controller that is designed to look like <laughs> Deadpool's ass. <laughs> I know, right? I saw that. Oh, that, that's amazing. Also in the uh, the movie F is Kaylee Fleming. What's wrong? Whoa. Oh. Oh. Hey! You shouldn't be doing that. Whoa. Calm down, We're just having fun. It's dangerous. If you don't stop, I'm gonna tell Rosita. Shut up! You talk too much. No wonder your mom abandoned you. What did you say? You're such a baby. She must have gotten tired of all her whining. Say it again. As she pulls a knife out against his throat. I dare you. You're from Fear the Walking Dead or Walking Dead? There's that the, is from The Walking Dead. Okay. Yeah, that was uh, that's when she played the little girl that just got the hat from Carl, and uh, I can't remember because after like season six, I think I kind of just disappeared. I disappeared that, season five, I think. It, it turned into too much misery porn. I came <laughs> yeah. back. For I came back for Jeffrey Dean Morgan as Negan for a little bit because yeah, there we go. Yeah, who wouldn't? But uh, now we have yeah. him in the boy. So why why even go watch <laughs> the Walking Dead? I mean, um, well. Also, 
tune in next week for our for a next week or the week after for an in-depth discussion of the boys season four and all why flanderization of your characters is a bad thing <laughs> <laughs> all right uh then also in this wonderful movie if is chris's uh male crush john karinsky it will text like jesse points like yeah john karinsky is quite a bit i'm just saying yeah, that you can't be I'm just saying that you can't be sure that it wasn't you. That's ridiculous. Of course it wasn't me. Marijuana is a memory loss drug, so maybe you just don't remember. I would remember. Well, how could you if it just erased your memory? That's not how it works. Now, how do you know how it works? Knock it off. Okay, I'm interviewing you. No, you said that I'd be conducting the interview when I walked in here. Now, exactly how much pot did you smoke? Neil, how much did you smoke before the show? Uh, Today? Just like... Just like 10 minutes ago. I don't know. I don't really know. <laughs> I live in Oklahoma. It's like everywhere. It's like more than water here. In fact, I'd rather smoke the weed than drink the water here, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> also in this movie, uh, Chris's other man crush, Mr. Steve Carell. I enjoy having breakfast in bed. I like waking up to the smell of bacon. Sue me. And since I don't have a butler, I have to do it myself. So... Most nights before I go to bed, I will lay six strips of bacon out on my George Foreman grill. Then I go to sleep. When I wake up, I plug in the grill. I go back to sleep again. Then I wake up to the smell of crackling bacon. It is delicious. It's good for me. It's a perfect way to start the day. Today, I got up. I stepped onto the grill and I clamped down on my foot. That's it. I don't see what's so hard to believe about that. <laughs> That is Classic great. Episode. Yeah, and Chris is a. Uh, if you don't know, Chris is overly obsessed with The Office. Like that's the only show he watches. No, despite... I don't. I watch other things, but yeah. Office no, is... just the movies that we watch. Literally, it's The <sighs> Office <laughs> and that. No, not... I'm surprised. Office clips. That was a, that was a choice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the la uh, the last guy we're going to say his name on this one because man, he's one of my favorite actors from the 80s and 90s. This is one of the last time uh, his voice is ever going to be used because he passed away last year. One of my favorites, Lou Gossip Jr. I don't believe what I'm seeing. Where well, you've been all your lives at an orgy? Listen to Mick Jagger music and bad mouth in your country, I'll bet. You better stop eyeballing me, boy. You're not worthy enough to look your superiors in the eye. Use your peripheral vision. Understand? Yes, sir. Now, every time I say understand, I want the whole group to say, yes, sir. Understand? Yes, yes sir. sir. Understand? Yes, sir. How do you get from Officer and Gentleman, right? Officer and a Gentleman. I mean, it's the second best role right behind The Punisher uh, with Dolph Laundriff and uh, Iron Eagle, the ripoff of Top Gun. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't call it, no, 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 I wouldn't no. call it a ripoff. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a completely different movie. Uh that one of actually one of my favorite movies of Lugasov's entire filmography was Digstown. Did there you, you go. go. Digstown yeah. with James Wood, Oliver Platt, uh mm -hmm. Heather Graham, I think was in that too, wasn't she? Like she's the, so. uh, she, she Bruce, was the little she was the girl or whatever, the niece, uh, whatever. Bruce Dern, who is one of the best professional shit bags you'll ever find yes <laughs> oh oh such a great movie if you guys haven't seen digs town go out and watch it today seriously you will enjoy it it's just a fun little boxing movie then the second movie we got this way is the one that we're all here to talk about let's be honest everything else is going to be just like five minute conversation because the <laughs> one we want to talk about is long Lades, uh featuring my kiev monroe there's this guy that lives across the street and he's always looking over here. Looking over here how? Every time I look over there, he's just standing in his window and it's like he's staring right at me. Which window is it? Right there. I can't see anything. Because it's day. He only looks in at night? I can only see him at night. That doesn't mean that he's not... You know what? Forget it. From Watcher, I think, last year? Yeah, yeah Watcher from... yeah. I fucking forgot I watched it. I was pulling through. I'm like, oh, I've seen this fucking movie. 
<laughs> Dude, that happens to us. Like uh, at this point, we're what we're at episode three hundred and twenty-six. Yeah, so that yeah. means usually about fifty episodes per year. If you add that all <laughs> together, so we've been doing this about five or six years. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. there's so many times I have completely forgotten about movies. <laughs> they they've been even been on my top ten list. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. That I... <laughs> All right. There's yeah, only so much space up there. All right, right. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. Blair Underwood is in this as well. Baby girl, there's a whole lot going on here you just don't understand. So I see. Uh, Lana, white folks in this country got the power. Now, sooner or later, we're going to lose this town. Now, why shouldn't one of us turn a profit in the process? <laughs> Woman, why can't you see? It's for us, Lana. For you and me. I'm sick of watching you day in and day out trying to teach them poor raggedy kids how to read. Stop. I know you was with Jesse last night. I know how this looks. And I know you're confused about a whole lot of things right now, but you gotta trust me. Because I love you. It's like Posse from 1993. Is that what Posse is from? Yes, Posse mm -hmm. is from yeah, nineteen. It was back where it's like a bunch of uh, African American black guys took over a freaking whole town of white yeah. crumpet bankers. I used to have it on DVD. I don't know. Don't don't, <laughs> add, don't ask questions. I don't know. Okay. I, I had the weird stuff. Ask. Yeah. Anyway, then uh, Alice Witt in the uh, I'm sorry, Alicia Witt in her first role ever, which was one of the biggest roles in the history of that you could get as a little girl. Here she is in the original Dune. I am a messenger from Moadib, poor emperor. I'm afraid my brother won't be very pleased with you. Kill this child, she's an abomination. Kill her. Get out of my mind! Not until you tell them both who I really am. Alia, daughter of Duke Leto the Just and the Royal Lady Jessica. Yeah, from June 1914, yeah. That role about to be taken over by Anya Taylor Joy for Dune 3 <laughs> coming up soon. Yeah, no, I, and the thing is, like, when I was a kid, I remember seeing Dune, and I tried to do that voice all the time. Like, my mom would ask me for food, and I'd be like, yeah, I would, I would, yeah. And my mom would be like, you ain't watching that movie ever again, you know that, right? <laughs> like, that's it for you. And it's like, oh, yeah? Yeah, look what happened, Mom. You turned me into a fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> And last but not least, uh, Chris didn't say we should mention this, but at this point, uh, Chris, I don't know if you know this, but this movie is just as five hours today has made over $45 million and is one of the most viewed horror movies of the year. So I'm pretty yeah. sure the secret's out, guy. The one, the only, the great Nicolas Cage. They're not real. You get that, right? None of it is real. The critics aren't real. The customers aren't real because this isn't real. You aren't real. <laughs> okay. Hey Derek, why do you care about these people? They don't care about you. None of them. They don't even know you because you haven't shown them. Every day you'll wake up and there'll be less of you. You live your life for them, and they don't even see you. You don't even see yourself. We don't get a lot of things to really care about. From Pig, and I fucking love Pig. I love Pig. And that's... That's fair. That's <laughs> not the best you... horror movie in the entire world, ever. Pig's not worth it. What? Yeah, but... I think you're. I think we're, you were. Uh, you were off again. Oh my god! Okay, everybody, we'll be back, yeah. and I'll be back in one second. Let everybody know uh, where we're from. Well, since you know, you're recording it anyway. So tell Chris, tell everybody where they can find us. 
You can find us all movies on that network, dude 2 mnetcom That's dude number two, mzmoviesnet.com. Find us there with a bunch of other really cool podcasts. One on the patreon.com slash you don't suck. One on the XMTS podcast on Instagram, MTS podcast. Go to patreon.com. I'm sorry. Go find our comments as soon as you don't suck. It's new. You'll find shirts and shit with their stuff on it. And, um, Neil. And, oh, yeah, we're ready to find podcasts. We're ready to find podcasts. You find movies don't suck. It's something they do. Uh, Robert, you want to go ahead and give your detail? Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, do you want to get your deets on your uh, stuff real quick? Just so people yeah, can sure. find you. Uh, you can find me if you choose to follow me on Twitter. I promise I'm a fairly anodyne follow. I'm at Winfrey MMA. My ne- my last name is a compound word. My complexion should cue you in that I am not related to Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can find me. I already met, I mentioned it a little bit before, but I'll say it again. I cover WWE SmackDown every Friday over at 411mania.com if you like professional wrestling. I cover UFC events on Saturdays, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And man, is there a lot of the latter these days. If you follow <laughs> MMA, it's just true. We're statement. back in the warehouse. We're back in the warehouse this week. And uh, oh boy. But I cover those on Saturdays. I occasionally will pinch hit on other programming, be that pay-per-views or weekly television, depending on the needs of 411mania.com. So you might find me elsewhere, depending on other people's availability and my availability. So you can find me over there if you interested in some of my writing on that topic. I host Damn You Hollywood if you like movie reviews, and clearly you do because you're listening to this one. Uh, I, I've... Uh, co-hosted that with Mark Radlich for eight-ish years at this point. Oh. Yeah, give or take. Uh, so we've been doing that one for a while. We're pretty much weekly, not this week, but pretty much weekly. We review a movie. We talk about the finances of filmmaking, the, the box office totals for the year, and then we laugh at critics who are terrible at their jobs because we <laughs> needed a closing segment. If you've never seen it, our last segment, we go to Rotten Tomatoes, we look at what everyone's saying about the movie, and we find people who are so bad at their job, they can and should be replaced with artificial intelligence. Like that guy the movies? How about that guy? Yeah, I like Kevin Carr and several <laughs> others. He, he's a regular whipping boy of ours. Yeah. All right, Neil, what um, are we talking about today? Oh, go ahead. About uh, last what? what, Chris? <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Robert. Go ahead. No, Chris no. Yeah, just like, just, just yeah, one more I podcast I host if you're interested in combat mm-hmm. sports. I late late Sunday evenings, I record the 411 Ground and Pound MMA podcast. So wherever you listen to podcasts, you should be able to find that. If you want to hear me talk about fights, make predictions, uh, talk about news of combat sports related issues, go ahead and check me out over there. Neil, yeah. who are we talking today? Yeah. Talking about what, Chris? You, you didn't give me any intro to that. <laughs> you just said, what are we talking about? And then, you know, who are we talking about today? Who? who, who was, wh- why, you, why would we? Who, who? What do you mean? Why? Fuck, I'm leaving. <laughs> Every week we promote us local business. If you're a local business, make sure to get a hold of us. Either email, match, uh, chat. Uh, 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 Chris is still on ChristianSingle.com, I think. Uh, where <laughs> you can find us, get a hold of us. We'll be more than happy to promote your local business right here. Today, I told these people I met last night because they literally saved us from starvation at midnight called Ooh. Reno's Argentina Cafe. Now, Reno's Argentina Cafe is located in the downtown section of Little Rock, Arkansas, 312 Main Street, North Little Rock. Now, here's the story. We were walking out of the arena after AEW 250, walking down the street. We see this sign. It says cafe. And we're like, maybe? We walk up to these doors. We walk in and see these two people behind it. And we're like, we want food. And they're like, they're like, there's nachos, there's tacos, there's, <laughs> you know, all these wonderful rib sandwich. And they're like, no, our kitchen closed 30 minutes ago. And we're like, fuck. They go, but our oven's still on. So this is the pizza that they made us to send that, <laughs> like a handmade pizza, at least. For us, but this place is cool, man. It's a long ass bar. It's like if you notice, there's a hallway that goes all the way to the back. Back there, oh, where am I? Oh, that's food. 
Uh, there's outside graffiti art. The, the drinks are really inexpensive. Smoking inside, which is always a plus to me because I smoke like a, mo a chimney. Uh, dart boards, pool tables, all the above. And oops, I went too far. Um, so therefore, if you have a chance, go to Reno's. You can look them up on Facebook.com, Reno's Cafe, uh, the forward slash Reno's Cafe, or you can go to their website, which is Reno's Cafe.com. Uh, Reno's Archina Cafe has everything from cheese fries to yeah, green salads, Greek salad, Cobb salads. Like I said, the pizzas that they made. Uh, how, how do you pronounce it? Hero? Gyro? How do you guys do? Are you guys all hero. argument? Hero. It's a hero. Hero? Yeah, it's okay. a hero. Yeah. Chicken cordon bleu, whatever. Good people. They they were nice enough to open up an oven and start one for us. Gave us a nice bucket of beer that you know we drank in like ten minutes. Like great guys, good people. Go to there if you're ever in the Little Rock area. Chris, let's yeah. talk if. Let's talk if. Directed by John Krasinski. You guys probably know from where the fuck you know, like a uh, from directing a uh, Quiet Place Part One, and of course he's uh, Jim Halpern in the Office. Uh, this stars Kaylee Fleming as B. What's wrong? Ryan Reynolds as Cal. Oh, hello. John Krasinski as Dad. I'm just saying that you can't be sure that it wasn't you. Uh, Steve Carell as Blue. I enjoy having breakfast in bed. And Lou Gossett Jr. as Lewis. I don't believe what I'm seeing. Also, the stars also a few are Bridges Blossom, Alan Kim as Benjamin. Is that Bobby Moynihan is Jeremy and a bunch of the people you can not recognize. You know, what is the storyline for if? A young girl who goes through a difficult experience begins to see everyone's imaginary friends who have been left behind as their real life friends have grown up. So I don't know how to be talking about this movie. I do. I got it. I got it. Okay. I got it. Go for it. I, uh, me and my wife has this conversation uh, when we because we watched it together, and mm -hmm. there for no reason was mystery around the dumbest shit that didn't make no <laughs> sense whatsoever. Like they made stuff a mystery that they didn't really give you the answer to, and it didn't make no sense. And so there's little parts like that. This movie was cute. It was fun. Anytime Ryan Reynolds makes words come out of his mouth, it's a good time. I mean, the guy the guy does mint cell commercials, and I'm happy to see them. It's like the only yeah. commercials I'm happy to see. <laughs> but, but um, I think it was fun. I thought they tried. I I don't know if it really <laughs> succeeded as well as it, it could have. But it was just kind of like um, we're trying to be Pixar without being Pixar, I guess, would be the best way, right? I, I, I guess, man. Uh, I, I It was fine, but I... I I would have never watched this if we didn't do it for the show. Never. I force him to do things like this. Yeah. Believe me, I'm in that same kind of relationship. I have no, <laughs> you have nothing but my sympathies. Robert, what did you think of this movie? <sighs> I'm kind of with you guys. <laughs> it's it's okay. This was better when it was a 20 minute cartoon. Yeah. Yes. For those of you unfamiliar with Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Oh yeah. We yes. <laughs> Um, that's a better iteration on this particular idea. I also, even watching the trailers and now having seen the movie, mm -hmm. I can't help but feel that Ryan Reynolds was not the first choice for the character of Cal. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think I, was the first choice? I'd bet a lot of money they really wanted Hugh Jackman. Oh, that would be a great one. That would be oh. fucking great. Because yeah. he'd have been perfect for the, I guess I don't want to give away the twist, but it'd have been good for the Ryan Reynolds character. He gets to wear the kind of shoes that he likes to wear. <laughs> Look, man, Hugh Jackman desperately, it, he was born in the wrong century, man. Oh, he he would have been the biggest star of like 30s and uh, like 40s, 50s era oh, Hollywood yeah. when everything's a musical. And he can just sing and tap dance on screen to his heart's content. Instead, he's doing more steroids than Scott Steiner over the age of 40 <laughs> to try and fit into the Wolverine costume again. And I can't help but feel bad for the man on some level. Oh, my God. I know. I, I mean, by any means, it, it's like, yes, do I love him as Wolverine? Great. Awesome. But I, I have to agree with you on that. Like, uh, what was the first? Uh, the I saw the Broadway play. But, I mean, off-Broadway. It was in Chicago. Um, I was 
Huh? Greatest Isham. Showman. No, 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 no. Way before that. It was uh, the uh, he was like in a white suit and he was like, uh, I think he's saying Copacabana during it. I, I have to look it up, but it was uh, mm-hmm. like he, he just got done playing Wolverine for the first time ever oh and then, oh right right i can't then, remember the name but i know what you're talking about now yeah yeah and he came out and then all of a sudden he did like this disco broadway play and i i happened to see it the, when they w- went to chicago with it and i was just like i absolutely love that wolverine's in front of me i think he's saying copacabana i want to say that copacabana was one of the songs that's his that real play. love though man that's that's just the, yeah, that's yeah, just like, he's like copa i i, I want to say that's what i remember seeing but again this was years ago and far away and like at least five concussions ago so yeah. like <laughs> so it's like i have no idea but uh, that he would have they really i feel like he was the first choice like look you can play this slightly gruff a little bit downtrodden but fundamentally (laughs) whimsical character you get to sing you get to dance around you get to wear these snazzy just slightly anachronistic outfits (laughs) and for whatever reason they couldn't get the scheduling or whatnot to work and they i'm not saying ryan reynolds does a poor job i don't think he i think he's adequate but reynolds He's got a problem being wholesome because <laughs> there's just something about him that everything feels a little bit off color. A little dirty, <laughs> a little R-rated. Like I ever since Van Wilder, you can't call back from that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it, it makes a few until you really kind of get into his take on this kind of a character, it makes a few of these uh, a few of these one of those interactions feel a little bit weird. Yeah. Um, he, and he also he does a bit more of the motor mouth thing. It's not as much here, but in general, he likes to fill space with words. He's very Ryan Reynolds. Like, like you can't escape like his sort of take on everything. Is it's just it's kind of the same. Like with like we'll talk about free guy uh, stuff that was okay for children. And this one, um, it, it's just Ryan Reynolds. I mean, it's it's not cow. Like you never even have a character. I feel like he called it in. Like I, I kind of feel like I, I'm, I'm feeling the vibe that Robert's giving here, where it says that you know it sounds like this was someone else's role, and it just kind of feels like he showed up on like a couple days before they said, "Here's the script," and he's like, "All right, so I read these lines, okay," and he just kind of put his little Ryan Reynolds on it, you know, like, "Oh, I, yeah, whatever," and then just like walks off, you know, like he did his little spin on it, but like. I, I totally feel it. I don't think he maybe he was concentrating too much on Deadpool two at the, or three at this time, or he was concentrating on something else. But I just don't feel like he was really into this character. I don't feel like I feel like he was just a call in. Yeah, so he again, he's perfectly serviceable, but it's one of those brief things where I feel like that character is get, winds up doing a lot of the heavy lifting for the emotion of this whole movie. And because mm-hmm. he's not quite up there, he's kind of. There, he's kind of here, you know, which is fine. He's not here or even lower, but you really kind of needed that. And you didn't quite get it for whatever reason. And so that, that was a little bit of a knock on it. Um, this thing was pretty long for a movie that it had all uh, all that it had it's like an hour and forty five minutes. I was they could have shaved off fifteen minutes. There were things that didn't need to be there, uh, like most or of it. some <laughs> things that could have been explained. All right, like the mystery of the mom and what happened. Why is that a mystery? <laughs> Why is that a mystery? Uh, Not, do we, like do you, we need nowhere in that mystery on the dead parent? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the parent's but, dead. That's all you need. But like, <laughs> but like the first thirty minutes in, and this is me and my wife. We're dead sober, we're not even stoned or anything. We're just watching a movie while we're eating dinner and stuff like that. They don't even explain that they that say, the mom you, passed. You, you, they just you, like you, you, the you, guy, and the and, and the thing is, the husband walks out the door and says goodbye, and then like 
no, they no. don't really explain that the mom died. Usually when the parent that walks out of the door in any movie or TV show, you can call bullshit if you want to, but usually the parent who walks out of the door is and closes it behind them is the one that dies, no, not but, the one no, that I, they're all saying goodbye to. Yeah, it was pretty clear to me that the mom died. I wasn't questioning. Oh, no, no, we we're, we're, we're just... We were just like, okay, but what what did she die of? Did she like get cancer? We don't need to know why shot? she died, dude. We don't need to know why she why, died. Why? We just why? Why not? Why? Why, why, why don't you? It? Why? Why would you want to know that? Like, why, why would you I want to like show that you're watching plot this plot fucking detail. movie? Like, it's just like, <laughs> fuck that. You don't need to know why this daughter's fucked up. You don't need to know. You don't need to know. Just because, like, if your mom gets shot in the face at the grocery store while buying you, you know, Fruit Loops, it's a lot different than your mom dying of cancer. It's a whole different level of fuck up. Well, I'm going to go with based on context clues. We're not going with a violent death yeah, for yeah, the yeah. children. I know. Movie, I, not I, yeah. imaginary friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And so, and so, and so I, don't, I don't think it was necessary we find out how she died. It was pretty good. Obviously, she died of some sort of illness. And, you know, nah, the, the, it, to me, it, it just it, it was sad. I and don't honestly, know. I it, cried. Like, this thing was an hour and forty five minutes. I didn't need another five minutes of them saying what she died of. I, I didn't, yeah, need that 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 have, it, it didn't even need to be a minute. Could have been like, yeah, I remember when mom died from choking on a ho ho. You know, like okay, well that would be weird to me. <laughs> they were Chris, Chris, what do you rate this movie out of five? Oh, man, this is like a three point four. I didn't hate it, but I, again, it's something remarkable to me. There are problems with it that, yeah. We, we, I mean, we, we barely touched on like the 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 uh, the imaginary friends in this, which are fine. But again, I don't I don't have much to say about if it. it's it's a movie that was yeah. The, the only the only imaginary friend that really mattered was like Blue. To be honest, the rest of them were kind of like in the distance, and you kind of saw them like for five seconds here and there. And the little, uh, whatever the little, uh, what was the little 1950s character one? Blossom. The, um, Blossom. Yeah, Blossom. Was, yeah. She, I mean, because here's the thing, uh, thing of all the characters up there. So, yeah, like you saw her for a little bit, and then like, the, I mean, you saw Lewis for a little bit, and the mystery guy kind of g- got me a good laugh. The the little, you know, yeah, I guess definitely. based off of the, yeah, based off of the question from DC Comics. I guess I don't know what he was. <laughs> any num- any number of um, pretty stock noir, hard boiled, uh, <laughs> private detectives. Yeah, and it, I didn't I didn't hate it, but again, it's just. It, it's not. It's not why. It's not movie like. It, it was I, not made for you, Chris. These guys were movie, not made. Look at these. These guys were not made for you. Yeah, this is a movie that. Uh, this not, well, no, no, wait, not, wait, 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 wait. I take that back. The unicorn is obviously made for you. Okay, come on. But uh, uh, no, it's like uh, basically saying this is not the reason I watch movies. Is if it's it, a, isn't it, it, dude? Don't you literally have like a blanket of yourself naked on a come like on. unicorn? Neil, what's your score on this? <laughs> uh, I, I'm right with you, man. I think three point. I say about three point four. Like it was cute. It was funny. It's not made for me. I'm not. I'm a forty year old man that watches pro wrestling. Uh, so like literally, it's not exactly up the alley of whatever. Um, I, I there was no character that grabbed me, and mm. that's the one thing that any movie has to do to me. I have to have someone of a character that I'm like. I'm all in on that character or I totally hate that character or I feel sorry for that. You know, something that gives me a raw emotion. That's what the part of cinema plays or any kind of theater between pro wrestling to even sporting events like give you. If you don't grab to something, you're just not going to care about it. And that's what this movie did. It didn't have me any grab me anything. So I didn't give two shits or hell about it. So, uh, Rob, uh, I know that Mark didn't doesn't do this thing. He fucked with this every time. Do you have a score on this one? <laughs> uh, sure. I'll, I'll play along. I have a score. <laughs> okay. Um, you, you guys go out of five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So two and a half would be dead average. Okay. I just want to make sure I understand that that's, yep. that's the logic here, okay? All right, Chris. So two and a half Tell is dead average. What I- Tell them what uh, two and a half is. Uh, two and a half. Uh, hang on, that's not my rating for it. I'm okay. just wanting <laughs> to say that. 
I want to make sure I understand like where Two we're going. Two and a half on uh, movies that don't suck and some that do is called Something to Do, aka it to do. Is an S yeah, Something to Do. It is the STD uh, rating on our podcast. <laughs> so you're giving a movie an STD if you go any lower than that. I would... <laughs> I'm, because I'm a harsh critic, um, yeah. which I get I get flack for on occasion. <laughs> well, I ask what the average is because it's not always entirely clear. <laughs> um, like the the scale I work I use for ranking professional wrestling cards is one through ten, but six is average. <laughs> so five is not so good. Six is average, and you get mm-hmm. flack when you you get flack when you rate professional wrestling stuff as average because if it's not at least an eight or a nine, they think you hate it. <laughs> for wrestling fans what are you going to do about them um for this one though so again if two and a half is dead average i'm probably like 2.7 2.8 okay it's not quite good but it's a yeah. little bit better than average yeah yeah there's at least something a little bit something interesting in this to keep it from absolutely not just being just dead average and i don't know what you call an average movie like that's that's a hard to question the answer but it's if is okay it's whatever but i, I guarantee you, i just love this probably like 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 you, you go to see this you kind of know what to expect you know and could have got to three if i understood how the imaginary friends interacted with the physical world because yeah. that was a you got to make up your mind on that one people yeah. are they, can they affect the physical yeah. world or not and yeah. if so are they actually imaginary and uh, yeah writing issue <laughs> uh, all right, man. Uh, i agree with that one that that, that mm-hmm. is a big writing issue and stuff like that you know i'm running to me what do you think the audience score in this one is oh i'm gonna say the audience score because you know what even uh, i've been seeing people still going to this at the theater like it's like this inside out too like with their kids mm-hmm. and stuff like that so i'd probably say the audience gave it a score of 68 percent Fucking eighty-eight percent. That's crazy yeah. to me. Audiences it's, are I not quit. the most. I, I quit. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Now, uh, what's the big bad mean critic score for if? Ah, uh, dude. Uh, for if the critic score, okay, eighty-eight percent from the people that go watch it. Critic score. Man, I don't know. Why. I feel like they're going to be more on our side on this one. I think that this. I think they're going to be around like. 71 percent 49 percent damn i should have gone lower i knew i should have gone lower my, oh. my guess would have been 55 <laughs> yeah i should have gone yeah oh Chris, i was, Chris I was Chris just lower than the audience score anyway, christian since this is a sweet elder discovering one's inner child if larger works as the old-fashioned thing entertainment it's about an occasionally unfocused unnecessarily complicated plot. i'll read a good review and a bad review this is from uh, Paul McGuire Grimes, the Paul Strip the movies. He says, Krasinski knows how to reach each member of the family differently, making for a good family movie night that sparks creativity and tugs at the heartstrings. Okay. Not not <laughs> unfair. Not unfair. Yeah. yeah. And this is uh, this next one is from uh, uh, Billy and Melissa, a men's journal. Uh, Billy says, I'm oh, no, sorry, I'll actually do this one. David Newstar, real film review, says, Oh, and if you're, yeah. <laughs> if you're well, we, do this, we do this every week. I know some of these people by now. <laughs> the appealing premise is, for the most part, employed the underwhelming and uninvolving effect by Krasinski. I'm really, fr- I, like, so uh, we're talking a lot about the director, John Krasinski, and he's made two movies, so it's kind of hard for me to think he has a style at all. And these don't really seem like, uh, I don't know if it'll be one of those directors you can look at and see. That's a John Krasinski film. I don't know if he's going to make those movies ever. But uh, uh, it's very rare that a director comes in in their first couple of movies and you immediately get a recognizable style. Yeah. I mean, if you're like Spielberg or Hitchcock or Tarantino, <laughs> you know, someone who's really immediately yeah. knows who they are and what they want to do, for most directors, it takes a few before you kind of get that figured out. I wonder if he's going to start being a journeyman director where they ask him to do stuff and he'll just do it, which is, you can do that, I guess. But um yeah uh that's that's if if you guys want to watch that it's on Paramount Plus uh, if you guys want to do that or you can rent it on Amazon if you have kids they'll like it <laughs> I mean, like that's 
That's, Ultimately, that's I think funny. I think if wound up doing okay money wise because it had decent legs and there wasn't a lot of family comp- family film competition until Inside Out two, you know, kind of broke the door open for the entire summer blockbuster se- uh, season. And now you've got Despicable Me four, which is kind of taking everybody taking everyone's lunch in that space. So. <laughs> Inside Out 2 is still knocking out of the damn park. I swear, oh, I can't it, believe it. it's almost had $2 billion now. Uh, it was 1.4, I think, last time I looked. So Yeah, I yeah. It's like it's already at 1.8. Oh, no. <laughs> it's, I, I just did, I right before this, uh, right before we jumped on today, I, I went back to yes, all the I can believe it. To, to That's insane. The, the desperation worldwide for just good family entertainment is very big. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of the studios that made their money appealing to families over the last, you know, eight years have driven a lot of them away with bad movies and bad messaging. And, yeah. And, and the fact that now the world outside is becoming, you know, 105 yeah. degrees every day and, you know, we're all about to die uh, yeah. means we need inside outside. air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the basement, so I'm wearing my hoodie. It's going to get cold down here. <laughs> Sorry, guys, but um, yeah, meat blocker. All right, let's get ready for the news. This is the movies don't suck and something news. I'm about to read stuff to Chris because he's illiterate from all those years of type two diabetes and drinking thirty seven diet cokes a day. What are you talking about? All right. I have to make I sure. No, I come up with something new every time. Why do you act okay. like it's something All new? Right. Right, so like, I've been doing it. I've been doing it for six years, bro. Okay. <laughs> like, lay it on us now. Good. All right. Good. Well, let's get through all the sad shit right off the okay. back. All yeah. right. Uh, we had a lot of celebrities pass away in the last yep. five days. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, if you don't know, Benji uh, Gregory. Benji Gregory played the kid off of Alf. He died at the age of 46. Uh, he's an new engineer I, he was alf is one of my favorite shows of all time i have the alf doll somewhere no i i, no. I mean I, I absolutely mean that tragic he and his dog both were found dead in his car oh yeah. My God. yeah yeah i was i was trying to and, and if, the and, details. And, and, and because we're humans it's the dog's death that gets us to react yeah, yeah. i know <laughs> so was it was it he exhaustion or was it what was it was, i don't know yeah. uh, i I didn't. I haven't looked to see if they've uh, updated that. Yeah, I, I just. I just saw the little bit that him mm-hmm. and his dog was passed away. Uh, also known for her mall rats fame, oh, yes, uh, Shannon Doherty passed away uh, at the age of fifty three this week. Too uh, young. She, she was going to be in Mall Rats too. She was. She was already like Kevin. Uh, Kevin. Uh, Kevin Smith was trying to help her with like kind of a comeback thing by using her in some of the films, and she tragically passed away. So that sucks. Go watch Charmed. What Charmed? Beverly Hills 90210 and Mallrats. I to me is still her best movie she ever did because I love Mallrats. But um, also this week, the greatest fitness guru in the history of the world ever. Most prolific. I don't know about greatest. (laughs) Greatest! He helped my aunt drop so much weight with sweating the oldies in the 80s and the 90s. Uh, The great Richard Simmons passed away earlier this week. Our condolences for his family. Now, guys, you don't know about this because you haven't been on the internet since you've been on this podcast, but I just went to this website where I got all this information, and I hate to tell you. Hang on. Let me see if I can guess, because I saw one earlier today that hurts. Yeah. One of the best comedic actors of all time. TV uh, sitcom actors of the, the the legendary TV sitcom. The only one that had more shows named after his name than anybody in the history of television. That's true. Yeah, Bob Newhart passed away. Yeah, oh, today. finally. Was, Bob, was, did you say finally? <laughs> you did. did? Well, no, I'm you sorry. fucking asshole. Uh, Fuck sorry. You. <laughs> did you just literally say no, finally? I, no, about I was like, Bob? Wait, 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 wait. Hey, uh, Robert, Robert, Robert. Can I talk to you for a second, man? Uh, just man to man. Uh, I think you just took over my podcast. Chris is no longer allowed on here anymore. Uh, like seriously, dude. Why do you want to get us canceled know, all the no, time? No. You try this shit to get us canceled. I just tell been everybody how much you Taylor Swift too. Who's been around for a while? That I knew her. <laughs> like you live in Kansas City and you tell people you hate Taylor Swift, you can't come on I here and tell, say I, I've you, never yeah, said he's one of the greatest comedic actors of all time. I've never said I hate yeah, Taylor I'm Swift, glad he's man. finally I dead. I, didn't, I, I don't even want to do just... the rest of the news segment now, bro. That kind of just like that was a stab. 
I mean, I, I, hang on. In fairness, and I, I do mean this in all sincerity, in fairness, if you thought Bob Newhart had already passed, that would be understandable. Yeah, yeah that's true. I mean, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but anyway, to all the families, all the families, condolences, uh, some of uh, history's great actors, at least to people our age or, you know, if not if you are a Gen Z or whatever, and you've not like ever seen Bob Newhart except for all that little spigot he did on Big Bang Theory. Mm -hmm. uh, literally go back go watch some of his sitcoms. They were funny. I, I'm sure some of them are probably not. Some of his stand-up's pretty good, too, man. Some of his yeah, some of his stand-up was pretty yeah. good, too. And I remember him doing the the Jerry Lee Lewis uh, or the, oh, Jerry Lee Lewis? Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis Marathon. It was Jerry Lee Lewis. Lewis. Jerry Lee Lewis is the singer. Jerry Lewis was Lewis and Martin. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, the <laughs> Jerry Lewis um, Marathon growing up, I remember him doing that. Oh man, telephones. Don't know if that I miss those, but they are definitely an artifact of the past. <laughs> oh man, come on, we all love them. Let's be I honest. Know. They I, kept I, PBS I, on the I, air before the government stepped in. <laughs> <laughs> um, Glenn Powell has given an update for all of us to know that filming for Running Man will be starting because they're aiming for a 2025 release. So that means we He's are getting a remake of the Richard Bachman book, a.k.a. Stephen King, Running Man, featuring the guy who's been in every other movie this year, Glenn Powell. I was, I've, I've, I've turned a corner of Glenn, Glenn Powell uh, after seeing Hitman. And then I watched everywhere I want some. I'm like, okay, I like this gun, pal. But uh, so I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it. his entire career in the big screen at this point is just what movies did I watch on HBO when I was eight, and can I remake them now? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes, I, I'm I'm down for that one. That is completely. That's We're reviewing truth. Twisters next week, and this <laughs> he's in that. Yeah, I'm going uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow or on Sunday, I'm going to an actual 4D theater to go see Twisters, where the seats yeah. all move and the air yeah, blows yeah, yeah. And, the, and stuff like that. So that will make it cool. But I don't think without that experience, I mean, another movie about tornadoes. If I want to watch a movie about tornadoes, I'll wait for tomorrow night when the weather changes and step outside. I live in Oklahoma. Yeah, you guys live in an area you could, you know, take a trip up to Chicago mm -hmm. and see all the devastation from. <laughs> that series of events a couple of days ago. Oh gosh, yes. Actually, my family lives in that area, so it's like, oh, uh, it, uh, I don't know. I, I think it's all Chris's fault. It is. Um, <laughs> if we could blame the problems of the city of Chicago on just one person, I think we would. But we all know it's worse than that. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it was. It's only one person, and it was Candyman. Um. <laughs> so. Today, uh, yesterday, actually, uh, marks the last, um, the final part of Crisis of Affinity Earth Part 3 coming out, which was the last performance we will ever see of Kevin Conroy's animated Batman and Mark Hamill's Joker. This was the final send-off. Kevin Conroy died a year and a half ago. This is the last thing that he recorded. Uh, a send-off to one of the greatest uh, Batman of all time. In fact, the only good Batman, I think, of all time. Um, Chris, what do you think? Yeah, you know, I know that you love Kevin Conroy. You talk about you tell that story every time we talk about him. By the time you met him, but uh, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you don't you don't like good stuff. I don't dislike Kevin. Okay. But um, talking about people yeah. not liking good stuff, Tyler Perry's new movie has now nabbed the one Whoa. of the only movies in the world uh, out of three to get on Rotten Tomatoes the zero percent from critics and audiences. Wow, <laughs> both. You gotta do some both. work to get both of those. <laughs> So I guess I, I like, didn't know that people hate it. I, I've never watched. I don't watch. That, that doesn't, that's not even me for me. So it's like. I've did not he just like that. give up? Like, I think he had like one or two good. Well, okay. Uh, acting wise. I think the only movie I saw him in that I liked him was uh, when he played Alex Ross. 
the Morgan Freeman Cross. character from Kiss the Girls. Cross. Yeah, Cross. Uh, uh, yeah, Cross. When he played that, I think that's the only role I've ever seen him in where I was like, yeah. But I've never liked any of the uh, what? What is her name? The big Medea. mama lady that she, Medea. Medea. I've tried watching those over the years, and I'm just like, eh. Should he try a new line of work, or what do you guys think at this point? <laughs> I, I don't know. Being friends I, with Oprah has benefits is the only thing yeah. I can say about that. <laughs> yeah, but Oprah's a big fan of that Tyler Perry. Oh, yeah. Uh, talking about I, sequels, I, by the way, guys. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. Talking about Tyler Perry. Talking about sequels, we're still getting that Young Guns 3 uh, movie coming out in the next two years. Uh, I, I swear, might... if they actually title it Young Guns 3 at this point, <laughs> they should be sued for false advertising. It should be like, it should be Young Guns 3, we're old as fuck now. <laughs> this, this is almost the retirement home guns. Like, <laughs> like no. <laughs> It's like it's like they're 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 getting out their six shooters while they're putting their dentures in and they're yeah. making like eating their pudding and <laughs> like uh, Lou Diamond Phillips. The, the whole plot is get, the whole plot is them telling other people to get off their lawn. Like that, that's where <laughs> we are with these people. Uh, yeah, Lou Di uh, Diamond Phillips reveals that the script is ready, and uh, Emilio Estevez is scouting locations. Uh, the air, uh, actors also revealed that some characters, uh, presumably dead, could come back to life. And as of right movie. now, development of Young Guns 3, it is officially greenlit. Okay. Well, I, I just don't I'm even... Sure I'm mean, sure Netflix will be pleased with their new streaming, <laughs> new streaming film. Yeah, right? Uh, Kevin Smith, I guess, is making a part of Jane Silent Bob three going to be a parody to of the evil dead series so kevin smith is going to release a new movie that about the same time george rr R. martin finishes the next game of thrones book <laughs> <laughs> so never <laughs> um the well anyway so what it says in here is behold the necrob kev it's the book of dead film careers it's actually called the Necrobabakin, and I commissioned it um, to unearth the ancient evil tomb that features the new Jay and Silent Bob flick, and I start shooting it later this year. All right, man. Well, I mean, let's do it, I guess. I mean, I'll watch it. All right, well. If you guys, if you, you beat have the like dead horse long enough, it becomes funny again, right? That that yeah. that's the like, subheading <laughs> of Kevin Smith's career. Well, after, well, pretty much what happened was like he almost died like three times, and so now he's like, man, I I don't want to do things for big corporations. I just want to do my dumb little, you know, stoner movies and leave me the fuck alone. Hey, and I guess look, right, man, cool. I'm I'm not going to fault him for that. I'm going to fault <laughs> him for the quality of his films. <laughs> there we go. Hey. <laughs> Don't bring up Tusk. Anyway, um, talking about, hey, guys, do you have a couple million dollars you'd like to spend? I, I wish I did. What's what's up? What okay, because up on auction on July 25th and 26th of this month, you can buy Princess Leia's metal bikini from Return of the Jedi and Bubble Fett's helmet and the Mandalorian's helmet at an epic auction over at Golden auctions known for uh king of collectibles off of netflix i'm good man you, 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 uh, i don't need you sure stuff. you don't man i i uh, definitely want to buy that i was thinking no if one, i get... no one needs any of those things <laughs> don't, I, don't do this i need to i think that i need the metal bikini so i can go to like uh you know like a comic con and i just wear that and I mean, you know like and i don't i can't wear underwear with it because there's no underwear in space if i remember correctly what george lucas told princess leia Oh, is that something that happened? <laughs> yeah, that's literally what happened. They gaffer taped her boobs so they wouldn't bounce in her eyeballs <laughs> while they were filming. Um, one now, a story that me and Chris has talked about for the last year, uh, came to a conclusion this past week. Uh, the actor Alec Baldwin has mm -hmm. been dismissed of all manslaughter ch um, charges of killing the 
Oh, I don't want to say it wrong. He, was it the special Cinematogra effects lady? Uh, yeah, photographer. Yeah, cinematographer. Uh, the, the proceedings have been dismissed due to cru uh, crucial evidence that was hidden by the prosecution team that they didn't give to the other. Sounds like a movie almost. Like the prosecution team I, didn't give the other team the evidence. I guarantee you, Alec Baldwin is already negotiating away the rights to this story. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's such a bad person. Dude. I, I, I can't, I can't like, uh, I can't imagine like, who's gonna buy Rust after it's done? Someone will, but like, like, how, how are you gonna feel watching Rust, dude? They released the Crow. You actually watch Brandon <laughs> Lee half die on screen. We're gonna pretend that somehow there's ethics involved in any of this uh, now. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Right, right. By any means, any means, I 100 percent agree. I mean, it's not like there's a big. Oh, you can't see it. There's yeah, 18 different wrong. streaming services desperate for content. Someone will throw a couple of million bucks at them to exhibit. Yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. I 100 percent agree with your. Um, with your theory on that. Um, Bette Midler has told the studios, hey, you better get hurrying on Hocus Pocus 3 because us bitches are going to be dead soon. Uh, <laughs> I love coming. someone that's honest. <laughs> yeah, but uh, they'll wait till after they're dead and do it digitally. That's, that's the trend these days, right? <laughs> that, is that in there? Uh, no, last but not no. least, yeah. we are going to be getting a bunch of Star Trek prequel movies uh, set largely on Earth and the creation of the Federation of Planets. And at the same time, Star Trek 4 with the Chris Pine characters uh, are also in the works as well. Are you guys tired of Star Trek at this point? Is Paramount like pushing this because this is like one of their only major breadwinners at yes. this point? Or, or is it are you dead with the Star Wars or Star Trek? Like, where are we at in this world? Uh, Paramount, de you're right. Paramount desperately needs some kind of recognizable IP. All they've got is Star Trek, and they've pissed away a giant chunk of that fan base over the last five years. Right. And I mean, so going back, hey, this is about the formation of the Federation of Planets. Oh, you mean Star Trek Enterprise? We're rehashing that? Not what we're doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, me, and, you man, also, if you're, if it, of all the fandoms to try and like, there's two fandoms that you really shouldn't mess with when it comes to okay, we're doing a prequel. <laughs> you're dealing with fans that know this stuff backwards and forwards, so when you screw it with it, it doesn't go over well. So I don't know how that's going to go. It's an area that I think you could explore, but. At this point, do they have any goodwill? I mean, the other one is Star Wars, and you just turned Darth Plagueis into Gollum. Good luck. Good job with that. <laughs> like, what are we? Yeah, you're you're not gonna find a whole lot of winners here. Even the even the uh, big budget films, like the the Chris Pine era of Star Trek movies, have had nothing but diminishing returns. In no small yeah, part right. because you all decided to engage in blatant false advertising. We're totally not doing the Wrath of Khan, guys. Better than Cumberbatch <laughs> isn't Khan. What kind of silliness would that be? Oh, no, wait. <laughs> he totally is. That was so <laughs> weird. I mean, I'm going to like, I like Benedict Cumberbatch and I like freaking Zachary Quinn. I liked him back when he was in Heroes and stuff like that. You know, I loved his villain more. And I like his box. But um, I, I honest, just like. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you know, it was just like what the hell like i was like what what's going on like i felt so weird <laughs> like i felt like someone touched me in a no-no spot and i should tell my priest but i think it was my priest that did it this is the only thing i remember about that movie is that i had food poisoning in the middle of it at the theater <laughs> so I, uh, I got sick in that yeah and uh it, well it that's what happens dude you, you can't eat at hooters and order stuff rare I mean, uh, that's your problem, bro. Is it the last, is that the last news story? <laughs> that's the news, guys. Let's get on to the last movie. <laughs> that was the movies don't suck and some of the news. Three nerdy baldy guys all talked about cool stuff that we knew at one point. All right, let's talk. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk. All next, directed by Alice Perkins. Uh, most a lot of done acting, but he's directed such things as as uh, Gretel and Hansel, which I think you and I talked, you, you and I talked about that yes. when it came out. 
And I just watch the witch. Uh, if you if you're thinking about watching Gretel and Hansel, just watch the witch. It's better. I, I love the witch. Which, yeah. he, he literally yeah. has Black Phillip tattooed on. Yeah, if, I knew he's gonna do it as soon as you said it. As soon as you said it, he's got to show his tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, my, you can't see it. It's kind of distorted. You just just send him pictures of you like with that mm. bl- as you're lying on that blanket of you naked on the pizza okay. or the okay. This this stars Michael Monroe <laughs> as um as. Agent Lee Harker. There's this guy that lives across the street. Uh, Nicholas Cage has long legs. They're not real. Uh, where into it is Agent Carter? Baby girl, there's a whole lot going on here you just don't understand. Alicia Witt as Ruth Harker. I am a messenger from... It also stars Mich- Michelle Choi Lee as Agent Browning, Dakota Dahl as Agent Fisk, but and Karen Shipka as Carrie Ann Camera. Uh, Neil, what's going to be the storyline for Long Legs? FBI agent Lee Harker is gifted new recruit assigned to be the unsolved case of an elusive serial killer. As a case takes complex turns, unearthing evidence of the occult, Harker discovers a personal connection to the merciless killer and must race against time to stop him before he claims the life of another innocent family. So um, there was a lot, a lot, a lot of hype around this movie. They were doing all kinds of weird, like, girl marketing where they, they would yeah, do they did like uh, what was all the marketing? I think I had some of the in the facts I actually came up with together, but maybe I didn't. Uh, if if you want to say nothing else positive about this movie, and there's other positive things to say, but at a bare minimum, this thing had the best marketing campaign of any movie in like five years. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and uh, I, I don't know. Uh, Cocaine Bear had that game. <laughs> Cocaine Bear had that game. It would have done well. <laughs> so long legs. Um. So I, uh, I knew there's a bunch of hype in it. So knowing the bunch of hype, I went ahead and lowered my expectations uh, when I saw this, and I came out and it fucking blew me away. I love long legs. Absolutely love this movie. Is what, that's uh, it that's all you just loved it i you want you guys no, to I, insight on it, any me. actors yeah nothing uh, yeah i liked it that, that you wouldn't i I'll swear see you without <laughs> w- without my annoying personality i wear i swear sometimes that your podcast would last five minutes and it'd just be like no yeah, that'd be like someone else here but uh, uh, so, <laughs> no, be the end of it. so this this movie had nothing but unsettling vibes throughout the whole thing i thought that nicholas cage did the god fucking crazy ass performance in it. Like I didn't recognize him. That was great. I love the fact that he was covered in so much. Uh I don't think if someone told me that, that was Nicola not Nicola. If someone told me that Nicholas Hage was in it, I don't know if I would have known that he was. Which is I didn't know he was in it. I, I didn't know. I'm gonna be one hundred percent. I did not watch one trailer. I did not watch anything leading up to this. You said mm-hmm. long legs, and I literally thought I was gonna go see a movie about spiders. Like I had no <laughs> idea what I was walking into here. Um, and I oh, love that I too. didn't, and I love that, like, because yeah. it's very hard for being someone that goes to the movie theater once, twice a week that sees, you know, how, how many minutes the trailers were right before this movie for me? Uh, 37 30. minutes, 37 <laughs> minutes of trailers before, like, I got there at 1130, it didn't start to 1207, you know, <laughs> like, like, but that's all. And so it's very rare for me not to see like something about something like I, I you know I've been dodging everything Deadpool and Wolverine so as much mm-hmm. as that can be a surprise to me and that's getting shoved down my throat every time I just turn on YouTube you know mm-hmm. like um but this movie just had I I understand why people com- are comparing it to 7 and Silence of the Lambs and stuff like that because of you know cops going against creepy killer kind of creepiness going on yeah. and stuff like that. I usually don't like a lot of slow burn movies. Right. Like I, I'm more of like into an action, but I really think they did the slow burn really well in this one. And like mm-hmm. the cinematography of this movie, like like she'll be like at a desk looking at a piece of paper, but in the frame, they'll make this empty doorway that shadowy, like right in the background where you think like a jump scare is going to come or like someone's going to be like that killer going to be creeping in the back, like Michael Myers or Jason, like the way they, he did the cinematography of this was like, um, 
I'm only going to say this because his dad was in the most popular movie this guy ever did. <laughs> uh, but it was kind of Hitchcockish, where it was like the suggestion of something mm -hmm. was more than the something that was actually happening. And there's a lot. That's a lot of this movie, just suggestion. And then, uh, of mm -hmm. course, in the last act, it changes. But I, I really enjoy the muted colors in this. I really enjoyed the the acting and possibly I mean, Micah. But it's all about Nick Cage and how fucking crazy he was. Like. That's a fucking fantastic way did. He was so fucking creepy. <laughs> like, like I've had people text me he's like, "Have you seen the Long I'm like, "Not yet." And they're like, J "Just no, Nicholas Cage is creepy as fucking he is." I mean, there he is. Bad, like, like, don't oh do my it, god, dude. look, look, like, oh, I no, didn't even know. What the fuck are you doing? What? Well, why you are you upset? Uh, uh, what? All right. Like, dude, <laughs> they they won. Do you understand? This movie only cost $10 million to make. These guys have already made over four times what they freaking... Like, don't worry. If they want to make Long Legs Part 2, 3, 4, 5, the miniseries, the prequels, the cartoon series, have the Collector's Cup given out at McDonald's, like, literally, they got it at this point. They are they're they got nothing to worry about for the rest I of the world. I didn't want you to show it to anyone else. I wanted people to go in this and not know what it looked like. But okay. You did. Oh, hey, 27 people that are watching. Sorry <laughs> that I ruined it for you. Like, come on. <laughs> Robert, what's your thoughts on Long Legs? Um, so, gun to my head, my favorite mm -hmm. movie of all time is actually Silence of the Lambs. Oh, mm -hmm. I watch it all the time, man. It's literally my cue. So, this movie invites that comparison very... Hey, people aren't making that comparison out of nothing. It invites it. Mm. Unfortunately, inviting comparisons to movies uh, that you are not as good as is always a bit of a tricky thing. I don't mean this as a disparaging comment to long legs to say it's not as good as silence of the lambs. Cause that's one of the most, that's one of the best movies ever made. That's yeah. Period. That's <laughs> I mean, film. it's like saying you can't, it's like, it's like comparing, like it, it, in the wrestling world, like always comparing someone to Hulk Hogan or Stone Cold Steve Austin when someone's nowhere even near that level. Mm -hmm. it, this is this is not that. Um, there's a lot of good stuff here. Uh, you mentioned some of the. There's some very strong director um, directing choices. There's a lot of very still shots. The camera doesn't move a whole lot in this movie. Yeah. It'll cut, but it doesn't follow. It doesn't track. It doesn't pan a whole lot. It's very. You'll get like mm -hmm. you'll get uh, depth of field stuff, but you don't get a lot of swinging of the camera. You get a lot of very static stuff where you're meant to sit, watch, pay attention, see stuff in the background. I mean, the opening, the opening scene from this movie uh, before the title card rolls, mm -hmm. yeah, is actually just an incredible short film. Basically, yeah. is what it is, and it's the most effective part of the whole movie, I think. Um, there's some really good use of sa of uh, music. It's oh, a little bit. Yeah, I agree with that. The use of music in this movie actually gave it a lot of feeling. Yeah, it's a little. It's all new music, but when I say it's a little cliche, it's like, oh, of course we're going to get the high strings. It's <laughs> it's very within the horror music box, which is not always a bad thing, but I just have to say that as a as a point of. It, it exists. Yeah. Um, there's some really creepy imagery. Um, Perkins has a very good eye for creepy imagery. I don't know if this is his, I go back and forth between this and um, you mentioned he did um, Gretel and Hansel, which I don't think is his strongest work. Yeah. I don't know if I would go this or the black coat's daughter. If you like long legs and you want something similar, oh, black coat's yeah. daughter would be the other one I'd recommend. Cause that's also his. Um, this one uh no no wait 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 not as his acting career as dorky dave in uh legally blonde <laughs> no no <laughs> i i don't recommend legally blonde as anything other than a method for enhanced interrogation <laughs> <laughs> they use it in the bay i swear all right they might have um <laughs> uh ptsd from reese witherspoon shows up every time no no um you got a baby in a bar anyway <laughs> so that, that's sweet home alabama not legally blonde <laughs> whatever 
I, I appreciate whatever. the whatever, but they're not actually the same film. I know, I know, I know, I know, I <laughs> know. Um, so, if I ha- uh, so a few of my criticisms, this movie, the plot meanders, and it's a bit of a problem. There's not a lot of. So again, because we're comparing this to something like Seven or Silence or Zodiac, even. Um, because clearly this is where inspiration is being drawn from. Right. Those movies, especially Silence and Seven, had a had an element of ticking clock. Right. Like why and you were never allowed to forget that the clock is running here and time matters. John Doe is trying to find, you know, the seven people that he's gonna use to paint his masterpiece. Right. Buffalo Bill has kidnapped a senator's daughter, and you've got a couple of days before she's dead. These are things that are constantly, you know, they're here. This movie does not do a good job at giving you that sense of pressure and timing. It's very creepy. And as you mentioned, like the the atmosphere that this thing creates is incredible for the vast majority of it. But that sense of inevitability, the sand running out of the hourglass, that's absent. And I think it's an important component of these kinds of stories that was missing. If I'm gonna, if I'm talking about things that didn't quite work for me, that's one. Um, the acting is very good to great. We not only have uh, both Micah Johnson and Nicolas Cage do a great job, and freaking Blair, man, give that guy more work. He has one of the most difficult jobs in this movie. He's the normal guy. Being right. the normal guy in a borderline surrealistic film is a very difficult thing to do. You're either way off kilter or you ground everything. And if you've watched, you know, Refn films and Refn projects, and boy, have I, um, you'll know that the guy trying to be normal can go, it can send things off the rails. Um, Blair Underwood keeps it on the rails. He grounds things, and it's very, very useful. Um, If there's another big miss for me, I'm not going to say big miss, but there's a twist. um, A twist? It's not the every, worst every twist time, in the world. Every time I always think of uh, it. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, the robot chicken. Anyway. It's not the worst twist for these kinds of movies. It doesn't quite land because some of the stakes around it have not been properly established, again, on the writing side of things. So that... And then... He, he said I that wanted he, uh, the twist. Uh, the twist of the movie. Uh, Chris was gone for a second. If you didn't know, okay. Uh, uh, um, I'm guessing technical difficulty. Uh, yeah. He said the twist of the movie was, you know, we're not trying to spoil it or anything like it. It didn't hit. Like, I, I one thing I do have to jump in here for a second because I have to go back to what you said earlier mm. about the the urgency. Yeah, I, I 100% agree with you. Like, they just kind of it was kind of background. It was kind of like, hey, by this date. Mm. But they don't, they don't like, if they showed you like a calendar and like said they're on the 11th and, and just like one time or like, then they're on the 12th, like the next day, if they just did some kind of reference to what the day was and what the urgency was, I think that really would have added a lot to this movie. Cause I agree with you that movies like silence of the lambs and seven, that this movie has been being compared to a lot did have that. It has like an urgency that like, if they don't find the Senator's daughter, she's dead and everybody's going to be fired and nobody loves the world and the world's going to explode seven you know it just feels like everybody can die at any moment and stuff like that and so i agree with that moment motion a lot i think that's one of the things that does take away from this movie um yeah again so the acting is very good some of the characterization is not the best and i think that's another kind of that's a weakness of the writing more than anything else we have good performances. I, like, I don't need more from Nicolas Cage than what I got. I need to know more about that character because that kind of character doesn't need it. By contrast, yeah. our lead, it's kind of important that I know and care about her. And I'm fine with her being socially awkward. That's actually, again, that's fine. But the relationship with her mother doesn't get fleshed out until later. And by the time it's fleshed out, it's fleshed out related to other things and it just, it doesn't quite line up. It doesn't quite hit. Right. And so that's a bit of a problem. The final, I wanted to love the ending sequence. 
Yeah. In the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. I wanted to love that. And I didn't. And I don't know if it's... I, uh, there's a tone and an atmosphere that they're trying to go for there for that kind of a scene. I'm going to have to be, I'm using vague language here, but if you've seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about. There is a, and there's just something off about, tr about the atmosphere and the mood for that kind of a scene for what they're trying to do. It, it I don't know if there's a musical choice they could have made differently that would have helped. I'm fairly certain there is. There's a line delivered by Blair Underwood that strays a little bit too close to comedy. It's meant to be yeah. terrifying. It's a little too close to jokey. Um, and I don't know if you can even save that line. Uh, like you, I know what they're again. I know what they're trying to do with that. It just doesn't quite hit the way it's it doesn't, supposed to. Yeah, instead of like trying to hit the home run, it hit like maybe a double. You know, like and there's it, it kind of gives a feeling, but it's kind of like you didn't make it all the way, bro. And there's there's a big question around the character of Harker, or Harper. Sorry, not Harker. Um, wait, this is Harker. Yeah, yeah, it's Harker. We're 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 aping Dracula here. Okay, yeah, Harker. <laughs> um, there's a big question about why she does what she does when she does it. If you think about it, if she has the ability to take the actions that she does right before the very end. Not doing it sooner is a really big, like, why? What's what's going on there? You kind of... <laughs> so there's a little bit there that just doesn't quite add up. Um, and the actual investigative part of this movie, of this story, is not all that strong. The eeriness is great. There's a bunch of great individual scenes. Again, Johnson does a great job. Cage does a, There's not a bad acting job to be found here. They're all very good. Yeah, the acting jobs were not called in on mm. this one. No, the, it's, it's the story. The, Perkins does a lot that, in general, I can say this about most of his work to this point, because I've seen almost all of it. Um, he gets by on atmosphere and kind of vibes instead of an actually well-constructed story. He tries to let theme... Carrie yeah, like Christopher detail. Nolan. Yeah, he just does atmosphere, has no good stories or anything like that. Well, no, he, he, <laughs> they're oh again, they're okay, but he's trying he substitutes theme for substance in a lot of instances, which is just kind of a choice. Like if you if you don't want to hammer out specific details, having a strong theme and a strong atmosphere will help with that. And his right. stuff does to the, to to his credit, it does smooth over a lot of those rough patches. But a lot of the detail of his film doesn't hold up to scrutiny. Uh, sorry, the detail of his story doesn't always hold up. Um, it's hard for me also when a filmmaker peaks very early because the first thing he did was Black Coat's Daughter, which I think is probably still his most sound overall film. Um, this one is probably going to be better known. It is certainly yeah, a much bigger hit. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, and here's the, a question. Here, here's a question I have for you to um, jump in here. Do you think this is like this is going to be his plateau? This is kind of where he's at, or do you think that there's going to be a movie that he puts out later that is going to be better than what Long Legs is? Because do you think this is him trying to figure out the kinks of his directing? Because again, he's only directed one, two, three, four, five, five things. Yeah, and you know, one episode of Twilight Zone. I mean, that took like a week to film. So the rest of it, you know, however long that took. But like, do you think? He, this is the way he's like working out the kinks. Like, is this like when they, they made like, you know, when they make evil dead and then evil dead two came out and evil dead two was the far better because they figured out everything they fucked up and evil dead. Well, it helps that you had a real budget too. Uh, in, in yeah. the case of the evil dead franchise. Um, I think he is capable of doing better than this. Let me, let me preface this with that. I think what's going to limit him is if he sticks with trying to do the auteur thing if he gets with a better if he gets with a good writing partner or finds better scripts that's going to carry a lot more work to uh, elevate what he's doing because at the moment he's doing a lot of the i write i direct i edit i have final say kind of stuff and 
the number of good auteur filmmakers like that is actually very small. It's a very romantic theory of filmmaking. And then if you talk with anyone who's worked with the people who work like that, most of it's not very good. Um, the best iterations of it come from Kubrick, who was just so painstaking <laughs> that, <laughs> you know, okay, we're going to get there. I'm going to make you walk. I'm going to drive Harvey, Harvey Keitel off of my set because I made him walk through the revolving door of a building 127 times. And he said, you're disrespecting me and my time. I'm out. Which is a true story from the set of Eyes Wide Shut. Uh, yes, Gary Oldman's correct. recitation 100%. of that is very good. Uh, but if you're going to be that exacting, you know, you can maybe get there, but you also wind up working with a lot of people who don't want to work with you all that much after the fact. Kubrick didn't have a lot of collaborators in front of the camera. Um, or you just wind up with self-indulgent overlaw. Uh, you wind up in a situation where no one's telling you no. You get Kevin Costner deciding I'm going to spend how many hundreds of millions of dollars filming a four hour epic that's going to blow up on the launch pad. Or you get Martin <laughs> all those movies have been canceled now. None of them are going to the theater. Horizon two and three are no longer going to theater because yeah. of you, how bad Horizon is done. Or you get Martin Scorsese bending the fabric of space time, creating the Irishman, which I think is still ongoing. God, that's crazy. Oh my god, <laughs> I feel like it's never going to end. It doesn't end. Yeah. Like I, I watched. I was watching because I watched his other movie. I watched um, oh, Killer of the Flower Moon. Killer of the Flower Moon. I watched that, and I'm pretty sure I was simultaneously still watching The Irishman. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to disagree with you on the Chris, ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris, jump in there and give us your first take. You yeah, kind of so, took off for a second. Yeah, yeah. Let's hear so, you. Let's wrap it up. So, my, I, I disagree with the fact that the ending, I think it was okay. meant to be, I thought, I thought it was meant to be ambiguous as it was. It's not, I don't think anything about it, but, but I, I obviously read, read about this movie afterwards, and I was pretty just did a actual uh, Nick Cage interviewed him in Fangoria. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. Um, so uh, I, 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 Ben, I read that last night after I got home from the movie that interview. Um, I, again, like I was pretty just, I, I thought there was a lot of clever things in this movie. It had me transfixed. This whole thing. Uh, at no point was I bored or, or um. Or uh, just like wandering off, uh, and you, I agree with you with the fact that it does meander a bit. But I could have spent another two hours in that world that you created that bleakness that that like you said a whole lot of atmosphere and made a oh, whole yeah. lot of story. I I also think that was a choice, the atmosphere part of it. Like oh, to, it is, and he does a lot of bleak movies. If you if you want to take a trip into the bleak land, uh, mm -hmm. Oz Perkins films will take you there, and I, I say <laughs> yeah. that as a compliment. Yeah. Good bleak right. films are hard to find. Yeah, and this 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 has all of it. Uh, I when when it comes to because uh, like you said, the inevitably going to be compared to Silence of the Lambs, one of the best movies ever made, right? Um, it's it's not it's not as good as that. But then I think we're looking at it the wrong way because long legs. Well, it's compared to that. I don't think it was even meant to be close to that. You know, um, and so. Uh, but a lot of people have the problem with it. It feels like a procedural, and I didn't. I think that was. I think they're looking for procedural when that also wasn't the case either. Like, if any, honestly, if anything, this could have used a little more procedure, like <laughs> a little more structure to it in that respect. Um, right. it, it, but anyone complaining that this gets bogged down in the procedural elements mm. has never actually watched either a very good procedural or knows anything about these kind of things because. <laughs> yeah. It, look, I, I, if what you're looking, f if you think this is too procedural, I'm going to recommend a, a slightly more experimental cosmic horror film for y'all to go watch. It's on Amazon Prime, I believe. It's called The Void, and that will do all the yeah! weirdness of this without <laughs> any of the structure of, without any of the real world grounding in that respect. So, if that's more what you're after, go watch that. I, no. I have horror recommendations. <laughs> yeah, I got some horror <laughs> recommendations. Like, uh, go watch all three of the Feast because there's nothing better. <laughs> Then a husband making it up to a wife when she gets skull fucked to death in the first movie to make her the leader of the bad of the good guys in the second film that she came back from the dead. It's a great story. Like I'm hung out with them this weekend. Great couple. They're awesome. Good <laughs> horror B movie. Anyway, Chris, it's a, it's that time of the day, man. We got it. We got to wrap okay, this up. Okay. So yeah, let's do it. Uh, Robert, since you're a guest on this one, we're going to let you go first. Robert out of five. What is your rating 
on long legs? Four point two. This is this is oh, strong. This is, yeah. It's a good movie. Um, I'm very gonna fall good even to this movie when it comes out on streaming. It, literally, this is a movie I'm gonna like. How I do Silence of the Lambs, uh, Seven, and uh, Kiss the Girls are like some of the movies I watch going to sleep because it's like that theatrical, uh, you know, that that very s- kind of slow burn at the beginning of all the films, and it's not blowy uppy and stuff like that. I think it's the music too. Like that literally yeah. behind those movies mm-hmm. that just put me to sleep like right away. And yeah. I think that's kind of weird that all horror movies are what I usually watch when I go to sleep too, but it is what it is. So I agree with that. So yeah, uh, 4.2, definitely a, definitely a high good, not a classic. It's not what, if you watched a lot of the hype develop, it's not that I don't think it's, it's not going to hit those lofty goals. So Temper your expectations a little bit related to that, but this is still very good. It's still definitely worth a watch if you like horror movies. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my score in this is four point four. I liked it quite a bit. Uh, uh, the um, I had something to say and it lost me. <laughs> but um, Along Legs is, is a very good movie. I was I was actually I going in with those stations, so I thought the hype would um, I, I tried to ignore the hype and uh, it's like you said. There are people that say the best movie of the year. Um, when it comes to this year, there are two really good horror movies. This, this is one. And so when I talk to people about movies this year, I'll ask two questions. Have you seen The Long Legs and have you seen Late Night with the Devil? Because Late Night with the Devil is, to this day, probably to the, the, the top of my list for fame I've seen this year. And I just, Long Legs is right behind it on at least horror films I've seen this year. And um. I'm very, very excited. Very excited for comes up next from Oz Perkins. Uh, Neil, what's your score? I like it when we get to meet like filmmakers that I mean, yeah, of course we've seen them in, and you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Gretel and uh, Hansel and whatever and stuff like that in the Black Daughter. But uh, I'm glad that we're getting a new director, new filmmaker that we're going to be able to talk about because I'm kind of getting tired of the same old, same old guy. So I'm glad that we're getting some new blood in the world. Um, Chris, you said 4.4, you said 4.2. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm right between you guys. I think I'm at that 4.3 because the mm-hmm. only reason I, I, I love this, I thought it was a really good burn and stuff like that, but there are some major factors just like Robert stated earlier that did kind of hit me weird and kind of like, oh, I wish I could have known a little bit of that information. Why is there a naked guy behind you? He's mm-hmm. not naked. That's my brother. Oh, oh, oh he had a chat. He had a shirt on that matches. Yeah. <laughs> he, he just he just got a shirt on that's very close to his skin. <laughs> I was like, why is this a random naked guy walking behind you? We're to be fair, a random naked person walking through the back of the frame is very on brand for long legs. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, I think it's this is one of those movies that you know. If I went to a friend's house and they had it on, they're like, we're watching this for the first time, I, I wouldn't leave the door right away. I'd probably sit around for a little bit and see if yeah. I actually wanted to watch it again. So it's like, and that's uh, one of my, that's one of my things that holds to me when I, I review a movie is, can I watch this movie again and enjoy it like I did the first time I enjoyed it? Or can I get something different from it each time? I can in this movie. Obviously, this is going to be a movie that... um I'll probably be watching. I, I'm pretty sure as soon as this comes out, I'll, I'll introduce this to my wife right away because I went to the theater to see this. And she doesn't like going to the theater. So, but yeah. <laughs> I, uh, but uh, all right, Neil. I'm on runtears.com. What's the audience score for Long Legs? I'm going to say that they gave it a 82%. 64%. People are calling this what the movie. Fuck? Yeah. I'm way off this week. Come on. I, I I got a little crazy and read some of the audience reviews, and people were saying that it's the worst movie they've ever seen. They walked out of it, and some people were saying worst movie ever made. Which what the fuck have you been watching? Uh, if that's the worst <laughs> well, movie. <laughs> in fairness, because we're talking the audience score, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We're talking audience. So audience ten. If you track the audience scores, audience scores tend to just be, did I like it? Without a lot of you know deep critical thought about it, and in fairness to the general audience. Perkins makes weird films that are not going to be polarizing. It's rare yeah. that you have anyone hear anyone talk about his stuff that is kind of down the in the middle of the road. It's either really good or you really don't like it. And we're 
and whatnot that I understand people being a little bit uh, a little bit weird about. Mm, okay. Um, the one thing I got to say about this guy is, okay, so I just looked online. I, I, I didn't see this, but my, uh, the rotation of the photo thing and IMDb mm. brought this photo up. Nicholas Cage with the actress that plays in the story, the picture they took together on the red carpet of the premiere looks like creepy grandpa with like the 18 <laughs> year old party girl or night or tw just turned 21 party girl that went on. Look at this fail photo. Like literally <laughs> it is like, they're barely trying to touch each other. She's trying to look sexual and then, and like, and it's like, is this the girl that Conway Twitty was talking about when he, you've never gone that far before? <laughs> no, okay. That's what it kind of looks like. It looks like he's Conway Twitty and she's the 16 year old. Didn't expect Conway a Conway Twitty reference. <laughs> <of all laughs> yeah. I know. With them on, uh, I'm on Rod Tomatoes still. What is the critic score for Long Legs? The, the critics are going to fucking love this. This is like a critic blowjob party. Uh, I'm going to say 89%. 86%. So not, okay. Not quite, okay. Yep. A uh, good review and a bad review. Here's a bad review. Um, this is from, I want to find the one that's 0%. Uh, this is uh, Jim Shirmby. He says, all creamy no pie, went out of five. <laughs> Yeah. One, I don't know why you're deciding to go with that metaphor here, buddy. And two, no, if anything, I would actually argue this maybe is a little bit the opposite. We actually could have used a bit more uh, confectionery on top of the atmosphere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is from uh, Doug James in the Jane Report. He says, it's chilling the way that crawls near our skin, courtesy of Osgood Perkins, masterful blend of the supernatural and psychological horror. And one genuinely fighting performance with Nicolas Cage is a 4.5 out of 5. As you go through these, there's a bunch of 5 ones that were the ones that they put out. They're, they're like, hey, this is the ones that we want you to pay attention to. Well, it was screened a couple like a lot earlier this month. They yeah, asked all these people that knew would love this and uh, blew it up. But um, I really liked Long Legs, and it's partially because I went in uh, hoping the hype was wrong. It wasn't. It was. It's a pretty good movie, uh, and I, I don't know. The, the, this will probably stick with me. And I, it, my scores are never the same by the end of the year. I, you, sometimes we change uh, in my mind on this one. So I, I, I don't know if we'll go talk about the end of the year, but we might, and I will see what happens when my uh, do my top ten <laughs> sometime late December. Um, I think I think we're good on this one. You guys can see this. Yeah, I, I actually just got a I just got a direct message uh, from a lawyer. I'm going to be able to sue Maxwell Jacob Freeman for stealing my personal property yesterday, oh. <laughs> using it during a match. So um, I, I, yeah, I, I think I need to get done here and talk to this lawyer. All right, uh, you guys can find us online. We're at uh, net. We're at wtm.com. Dot com is the number two is the movies net, uh, and uh, we're also on. Instagram at uh, DS Podcast on X and DS Podcast. Uh, you guys want to buy a shirt with our face on it or our name on it? Go to bonfire.com so it's out and something to do. Uh, not just also, Bonfire, we also are at tpublic.com too, yeah. which is a backslash Blackwood Productions because I didn't know what to put an ender. But <laughs> we have a bunch of shirts there as well. We're on Patreon. We're Patreon slash new Patreon com slash news on Sugnet. We can get a value email and then we have a few scars. And then, um, you know where you find podcasts from movies that don't suck and something to do? Oh, yeah. If you're on YouTube and subscribe or Facebook and all like that shit, I don't care. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, uh, Rob, you want to give your deets again? Yeah, sure. Um, you can find me covering mixed martial arts and professional wrestling over at 411mania.com. WWE Smackdown on Friday. UFC events every Saturday. Uh, occasionally pinch hitting elsewhere. So you might see my byline over there on occasion on different things. Uh, again, come drag me in the comment section because that's kind of what it's there for. <laughs> uh, I host damn you Hollywood, which is most Mondays. We talk about one big uh, movie that came out over the last week. We give it a deep dive craft wise. We talk about the business of movies. So we talk about, you know, how the box office has been going for the year. And Mark is finally happy because something actually did well. Financially, and we can talk him down <laughs> off the ledge. And um, this, uh, there is, there was not one last this most recent Monday. We will be doing uh, twisters on this coming Monday, so tune in for that if you're interested in listening to. Uh, you guys have had Mark on before. If you like Mark, he and I always have a good time, and we'll be talking twisters. 
I may or may not be pinch hitting in about 40 minutes for <laughs> another podcast. Uh, that's an on trial for the original Twister movie. So <laughs> I'll be back for that uh, in case one of the participants doesn't show up. So tune in if you're, if you're <laughs> listening to me live and want to hear more of this. Uh, I might be over there for an on trial for the Bill Paxton. They put Bill Paxton and Philip Seymour Hoffman on the same screen at the same time. Now it yeah, is. It's, it's makes crazy. Cry. Yeah. It's sad. <laughs> um, but we'll, uh, so I might be over there. We'll see if not, if you just want to hear Mark and uh, I think Ronnie is scheduled talk about Twister, uh, that nineties classic disaster flick. Go check that out. You don't need to listen to me talk. You can listen to other people talk if it's a, uh, on a subject that you're interested in. So I think that's right. it for my recent plug. So thank y'all for having me. Oh, no Anytime, guys. Yeah, what's what, what are your small businesses? Small businesses. If you got a small business, let us know. Just send us an email message, direct message. Uh, follow Chris to his home over at 2764. That's um, not my address, but uh, I don't want to get out. Shawnee Mission. <laughs> anyway, um, Anyway, uh, just let us know. We'll be more than happy to advertise your business right here to our thousands of listeners, our millions of followers right here at Movies That Don't Suck and some to do. Are you guys ready to get here? Let's do this. Yeah, let's do this. Well, that's another episode of Movies That Don't Suck and some to do. My name's Neil. And I'm Chris. And I'm Robert. <laughs> uh, we had a good time talking about love, death, and the things that all come between. But remember, guys, when it comes to all three, love is the other one that only makes the other two exist. Have a good day. <laughs>